Hey, what's going on guys? Comic again the year. Recently I got a request from one of my subscribers asking me to help him scrape in this sort of a site. So the URL is available in the browser already. And uh, the data format is the simple HTML table, uh, which I really like to scrape because it's incredibly easy. And just not to waste your time watching me creating a new spider from scratch uh, in the code editor, I would rather go for my favorite uh, format of creating a one-time scraper within the Python scrapey shell. So without further ado, let's actually start writing some code. So yeah, by the way, just to give you an idea, so we will also be crawling through the range of pages. But first, we actually need to extract the data to run a story to CSV format, make sure that all the uh, fields are stored properly. So we need this date, sale price, address, grantor, and all this uh, all this data uh, basically. And then when it when it's working, we would be adding the uh, crawling through the pages logic, and we're done basically. So here I got a folder. Uh, to open terminal in, just like my working folder, we would be storing CSV file into this folder. And I want to invoke the scrapey shell here. And now in order to make the response, and, uh, and now, in order, now, now in order to make HTTP request and to work with the response simultaneously within a single line of Python code, I would like to use this. Uh, parenthesis that creates a tuple, but it doesn't really matter. We could have used the square brackets as well. The idea is to make this res request and response simultaneously. So first, I want to fetch uh, the data from the uh, from this sort of a site, and then here uh, it's the uh, template for list comprehension. Here we would be writing the data extraction logic. So first, uh, assuming that we have this page number one, uh, I actually, well, first uh, I will grab this completely and then I'll just uh, alter the page equals to one to a URL plus string to get the proper page uh, within the loop. Well, anyway, so just pasting this stuff in and I think, yeah, we can already, well, uh, can already make a request just to make sure that it gets the 100 response and it does which is really good. So now we can actually work with this uh, with the data extraction logic So this is the HTML table. I've been already checking that out So uh, all the, the the data is being scraped from HTML tables uh, all all way along the same like regardless of what data is there So this is done the following way. So we need to say response.css and we're looking for a table and within the table we're looking for a table row now we need to loop uh, over all of the rows uh, uh, available within this table. So I can say for tr in, tr stands for table row tag, maybe whatever variable name for tr uh, in this sort of a list. Let's first print tr. And this would be the type of Python uh, scrapey selector. And this selector has the list of td tags, which stands for table data. And this are exactly the data values from like this date price etc so uh, we simply need to extract this guys in the following way so we can simply say just tr.css and uh, we would be extracting all the table table data tag and the textual value of them and get all and now we find we get a list of lists uh, in this sort of a format now, what we don't really need, we don't really need this first URL, which is annoying. So we only need this one, two, three, four, five, six uh, rows here. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is it. So in order to get rid of this one, uh, I would be using the index slicing technique. So for every uh, uh, item we're getting here, I just want to start from the very first. Uh, from the very first one. Well, it's skipping the very first one. So now it's much better and already we can try to write this uh, All this sort of a stuff into the CSV file. So in order to do this first we need to import the CSV and then uh, we're passing this list of uh, lists uh, to the CSV writer. So I just want to create the CSV dot writer here and uh, Let's first uh, call the method. So it, it's called write rows and like this and now uh this writer takes the file stream as its argument so i need to say open and now specifying the file name let's call this data.csv and as far as we have the multiple pages we would be appending data instead of just uh, uh, directly uh instead of overriding like with this right but we would be appending instead so this is it and now this should already create the uh, data CSV file. So let's have a look what we, what we got in our output. 
Okay, so it seems like there is some unnecessary uh, space uh, at the very top, but the but this sort of column seems to be quite pretty nice, I believe. So it's one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So and, and again, just need to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need just need we just need to skip the first seven rows here uh, in order to make the data look uh, look appropriate. So in order to do this here, where we we'll, where we actually get in the a list of initial rows, we just can say, so starting from the seventh uh, uh, item, uh, the, the seventh row and up to the very end, and now this should slice the unnecessary rows. So, okay, excuse me. Okay, oh, it just, okay, it just appends the file. Yeah, that, that's, that's the, sorry guys, uh, I need to delete this file and run this one more time. It just uh, appends the file by default. So yeah, during the development process, I need to uh, actually reset it, this stuff, deleting the file every time. But here is still like uh, our uh, unnecessary, unnecessary rows has been stripped. So starting from 615 to 111th, and this is what we got, the very first row. And uh, well, I believe uh, to this very last one, 115, 2008. So let's have a look. Uh, 115, 2008. So this is, it seems to be exactly the data that we actually want to have a look at. We want to get scraped. Very simple. And we have up to 50 entries. And from now on, we can actually add the functionality of crawling through the range of pages. So uh, this uh, uh, pieces of data would be uh, written one by one into our text file. So that's quite pretty it basically. Uh, again, I, uh, I need to delete this file in order to avoid any duplications. And now here uh, we need to alter code a little bit. So uh, I, will, uh, I want to enclose the entire stuff into the uh, square brackets, which means another outer list comprehension. And here we loop for page in range of let's say from one to i don't know let's say to 10 pages just need to figure out how many pages there are available but i think that's not a big deal really so i just i just want to show you this uh kind of like uh idea of how to crawl through the range of pages and now uh one little thing to add here would it be to change this you see like this page here i just make it a bit bigger uh, so we have page equals to one, and now we need to say page plus and stringifying our page. And this is literally it. So if I just run this script again, it would be crawling through the range of pages like one, first page, second page, third page, so fourth, fifth, eleventh. You see, like pages are being crawled. And at the very end, uh, we should get a CSV file containing a like uh, the number of pages multiplied by 50 entries, basically. So the, the last page was nine. So it's like nine multiplied by uh, 50. I'm not good at math, sorry guys. Don't know what that's gonna be, but let's better have a look at the data. Okay, so yeah, it seems like we got really all the data from, yeah, uh, yeah, 400, obviously 400, 445, yeah, 450. So we did scrape the data from all of these pages, like from one to 10, it's kind of nine pages. And probably the very last thing to consider just to, so if, if we have the overall number of pages equals to 500198, uh, and probably, well, so how to calculate it? We need to divide uh, 500198 by the number of pages. So it's kind of 50 per, per page. And this is would be, well, actually 104 pages. So this means that here in the source code, I need to set it to 105. So this would be exactly 104 pages. And I'm not gonna be running this because it, it would take kind of a bit too long, but uh, I will just leave this uh, source line of code to give you an idea how to scrape the entire data from this sort of a site. So j just to give you an idea of how, how it's working, uh, I'll probably just can run this to, to show how, how the data is getting uh, uh, scraped uh, page by page. So if I just delete this one again and just run this code and the crawling is going, well, you know, like, yeah, so 
100, 100 seconds so <laughs> how many it's about it's more than a minute right it's about almost two minutes well maybe i would be talking uh, <laughs> during this scrape and it's going but uh what we can see uh, we can uh, track this in the text editor say and uh, if we can kind of like uh, update in this we can reload and see that already it's like 900 entries and we and if we just update this again it would be like okay one uh, uh, eleven hundreds and so on and so on so it would be going until literally scrapes all the data set well uh, and as far as this was a request from my subscriber yeah i, I will probably just uh, actually talk a little bit while uh, the job is uh, is getting done and i would probably just send him this uh, line of code and also the data as well so well maybe he make he, he, he will make use of it uh, maybe he will make use of it at least i really hope so so this is the idea guys so in case if you're actually trying to scrape uh data from html tables the structure is all about the same just yeah as far as we have a little time i just can show you this so what we have been doing if we have a look at um, control f at the table tag where it begins uh well actually we have yeah we just have several tables that's pro probably the reason why uh, I needed the, those little slices, uh, but anywhere uh, already, yeah. Starting from, say here, you see like, we have a table tag. It's the layout not really that great, but anyway. And then we have the table row uh, row tag, which means that a uh, table row uh, in encapsulates the list of table data tag. So literally all the columns, and then we have like kind of another. Ah, oh, actually, it's just having another table. Uh, well, maybe I can just try to search for this sort of a uh, uh, loading data. What are you doing, man? Oh, I did. Oh my God, I did something horribly wrong. Sorry for this. Uh, I didn't mean this really. Okay, something has gone horribly wrong. Oh my God, what have I done? Okay, thank, thank God. So, well, let's try this six fifteen two hundred eleven. Uh, so this this t table data and six fifteen yeah this is it so this is more like what we were actually scraping here so for uh, we have the list of this table data tags for all the data we need here and then it comes for us for for next table row tag i just can't see it, to be honest but it should be somewhere somewhere here table row where are you oh, okay this is it so here table row ends yeah and here new table row actually begins and so on and so on so the structure is quite pretty simple and every time we're scraping data from tables the logic is all about the same so we just need to uh we just need to extract all the table rows which we've done here i just sliced the indexes like the first seven unnecessary rows that we don't really need to care about then we just, uh, uh, as far as this is the iterable, we can loop uh, over it and uh, every instance of this iterable would be the table row and every table row has its table data tags, quite pretty simple. So from every table data tag, we just need to extract uh, this. Uh, from every ta table, row rack, uh, table row, we just need to extract this table data and the text attribute and the get all would already get a, give us a list of all the available uh, table data uh, columns basically it just lies in the first index because there is some unnecessary URL that we don't really need to care about and that's literally it so quite pretty simple then we just making this simultaneously with the request and then we're just making this within a loop to crawl through through the range of pages so this very simple line of code I've been showing this many times before on this channel but well with this new mic that I have I probably this would be much more pleasant to listen to this sort of a tutorial so let's have a look if uh we actually oh it seems like yeah it seems like the crawling has been ended because it actually allowed me to um, uh, reference the the line that i that i've written actually so let's have a look probably yeah yeah it's not no longer being being updated and we have up to 40 400 4, 000, and a 100 of entries with this data hopefully valuable for my subscriber and this is it basically so I uh, hope you like this tutorial, guys. Uh, kind of like if you want to scrape data from HTML tables, it's not worth of actually creating the full-blown scrape spider and even project is absolutely total disaster. Just make write this simple line of code and get the job done quite pretty quickly. This is it from my side. 
Good luck again was with you guys. I wish you all the best. See you in the next tutorials. Until that time and take care.